Good day, everyone. Um, I'm, my name is uh, Cedric de Kooning. I'm with the Norwegian Institute for International Affairs. And together with the Shanghai Institute for International Studies and the Stockholm Peace Research Institute, CIPRI, I'm delighted to welcome you all to our seminar this morning on the water energy food nexus and its implications for climate change and security. We are uh, entering into a dialogue between uh, the Nordic Baltic Climate Security Network and our colleagues from the Shanghai Institute for Security Studies and other colleagues from China. So we are delighted to, to start having this discussion and the joint uh, sharing of ideas around this very interesting and I think important topic. But to kick us off, I will go to our first two um, speakers who will start off our seminar. And I will turn first to Professor Shen Dongshao, the president of the Shanghai Institute for Security Studies. Please, Professor Shen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, distinguished colleagues. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, on behalf of the SWIS, um, on behalf also on behalf of my uh, colleagues, Professor Yu Yu and uh, Dr. Zhu, uh, I would like to express our uh, appreciate, uh, appreciation for all of you participating in this workshop on the water, energy, uh, food nexus and its implications for climate change security. Uh, we are very honored and delighted to work with the new P and the CIPRI uh, this time on this very timely and important conference. I, I would like to, in my opening remarks, only just make three brief points. Number one, I think that uh, based upon my understanding of this uh, project, the content of the security is increasingly comprehensive and uh, it should be addressed in an integrated and uh, holistic way, political, economic, uh, biophysical, environmental, technological, financial dimensions of security concept, you name it, are more closely uh, interacted or intertwined together in a, a, a complex system. So as this abstract or this orientation of this conference has made very clearly that in the context of climate change, security is not only a relationship between countries, but also the interdependence between the issues. This ongoing changing feature of security has called for a paradigm shift on the discourse of security. Uh, geopolitical aspect of security is important. People-centered aspects of security are more fundamental. What is more, now we are confronted with the new challenges arising in conjunction with human dominated systems on a global scale, human actions have become increasingly powerful drivers on a planetary scale, planetary scale. We now have to think increasingly in terms of the concepts like the planetary boundaries and uh, ask ourselves whether we are capable as a species of a human being to take steps needed to ensure the maintenance of the safe operating space for humanity. My second point is that developing countries as also this as the orient, orienting points, orientation of this conference has made it, made it very clearly, uh, developing countries are confronted with the challenges of developing the economy, eliminating the poverty, protecting the environment and fighting the climate change, et cetera, et cetera. In the developing world, water, energy, and food forms a security nexus with great sensitivity and vulnerability. Such vulnerability, as I observe, has been deteriorated under the hard hit, under the hard hit of the COVID-19 and, and its surging variants. So we know that developing countries are now going through a historical SDG reversal uh, and uh, the Delta variant has led to a more divergent scenario for the recovery as the uh, uh, United Nations, uh, re many reports of the United Nations has made it very clearly. Many developing economies are now facing both a slowdown in the growth uh, with important export supply chain issues and the shortage of uh, resources, uh, including capital and technologies. 
to handle those post-COVID recovery in the so-called green and innovative way. This is not good news. It means that development pathways are diverging across the world, and they are at risk of diverging further in the years ahead. And one of the significant consequences is how to tackle the energy transition in, de in developing countries to put us on a post-COVID green recovery path. My last point, my third point is today, we will address the water energy food interdependence with folks on the developing countries. And as this conference and all the participants has already made very clearly, that the security nexus approach provides a new explanation for the resources competition cooperation and conflicts. And I think that approach, this approach should also be adapted uh, in the context of energy transition in the developing country on the post-COVID recovery paths. So I think that today we, when we address this uh, topic, it is extremely timely and important. And uh, I know that uh, China, Nordic, and other countries can share their expertise, knowledge, experiences, and, and, and the practices, actually, and also reinforce uh, uh, our cooperation with the developing countries, help each other, and enhance the mutual understanding and the trust. So with that, I will wrap up my opening welcome remarks and give the floor to you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shen, for uh, that uh, opening remarks. And, and let me turn now also to uh, Dan Smith, the director of CIPRI, for his opening remarks. Over to you, Dan. Yes, thank you very much, Cedric. And I want to thank um, Yong Zhao for a really interesting, uh, dynamic opening presentation that sets the scene for us very well. I, mean, I think the linkages that you've um, emphasized there that take us to the broader environmental questions a link to the health issues, to the political and economic questions, to the development paths and to the, di the question of development divergence that I think is very important to, to bring into the picture. And then thinking through there what the connections are with security. I think this really underlines the point that when one is thinking about clim climate change and its impact on insecurity, one is thinking about the interdependence between the different issues and the interaction. And I suppose it's a cliche, but it does mean that, you know, we really have to get our thinking out of the silos and be approaching uh, in an integrated fashion. I suppose with COP26 about to start, it's inevitable that there are reports and grim warnings uh, coming through. Uh, and I think that we, we really need to, um, to pay attention to it. The analysis of the paths which um, countries are set on, given the pledges that have been made about achieving zero carbon in general around the time 2050, means that the gaps, gap between where we should be and where we are will not even in the best scenario be closed until sometime uh, in the 2070s, 2080s, in other words, five or six decades. In other words, as far ahead as we can see, we need to think about these impacts of climate change upon the context in which we do our work, upon the context in which we look for prosperity, happiness, peace, and all of the other human goods. And therefore, we really do need this uh, collaboration uh, between researchers, between practitioners, among decision makers, on how to respond to the security challenges of climate change. And I, th I think I've been working on this question now for some time, for a decade and a half maybe, um, and it still remains one of the less explored dimensions of this uh, climate change issue. Uh, one still has to press in many environments to get a hearing for the argument that climate change um, has a security impact. What I think about this is that, you know, Warnings on climate change, on global warming, actually started to be sounded in the 1970s. Um, really, by the early 1980s, NASA and leading scientists knew essentially what is known now, the essence of it. The details have been filled in in the meantime over the past 40 years, of course. The modeling is far more precise because there's been more experience. But the warnings were being sounded several decades ago, but they were either ignored or they were not acted upon. And sometimes the recognition of the problem has been there, but the, um, the agreement and, 
on solutions and the implementation of those solutions has been lacking. And I just hope, and it is our, in a sense, it's our mission to make sure that the same mistake is not made in relationship to the security question. So we really need to put intellectual energy, but recognize that there needs to be political energy uh, going into this as well. Next year in Stockholm, the conference will be held, which is the uh, marking the 50th anniversary of the first high level international conference on what was then called the human environment. Um, so Stockholm plus 50 happens at the beginning of June 2022. And just before that, in an, um, an internationally uh, funded and supported effort, CIPRI will be bringing out a report uh, on the relationship between environmental issues and peace issues. And um, NUPI is a part of this. We hope the Nordic uh, Baltic Network will be joining in this. And Professor Chen, I want to invite you as well uh, to be joining in this process of pushing this, um, this argument forward, especially thinking about that timing in um, early summer, early European summer of next year. Um, I am really apologetic. I'm really regretful that I have to leave this seminar shortly after I have spoken. Um, I know I leave you in really good hands. Um, we're, we're doing some really interesting work on the cutting edge and uh, this is going to be set out and discussed amongst you all. Learning and exchanging on a global basis about these global challenges is the key to the solutions to them and to addressing them properly. So I wish you well with this step in that process and we'll be together in taking further steps along the same road. Thank, thanks a lot for, for being part of this today. Uh, Cedric, I hand it back to you with that thought. Thank you very much, uh, Dan, and, and both you and Professor Shen Dong Shao really laid out how this is, of course, our key global challenge. And uh, the seminar today is really one of the ways in which we want to help to stimulate a global dialogue around these issues, help to shape each other's ideas and inform each other about our thinking and how we engage with this problem. And so I'm going to hand over now to my uh, NUPI colleague, Elizabeth Rosvold, who will be the moderator for our panel. So over to you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Cedric. And uh, thanks for a very interesting uh, opening uh, remarks. Uh, I'm very happy to, to moderate this uh, panel discussion that we will have now um, with um, Dr. Uh, Yu Hongchang from uh, who is a senior research fellow at the Climate Peace, um, sorry, um, who is a professor and director of the Institute for Comparative uh, Politics and Public Policy at the Shanghai uh, Institute for International Studies. Um, we also have uh, Dr. Florian Krampe, who is a director and senior researcher at the Climate Change and Risk Program at the, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Um, from Denmark, we have uh, Dr. Signe Marie Kold Ravnkilde, who is a senior research fellow at the Danish Institute for International Studies. Um, and then we have Dr. Chai Kim Min, who is the director of um, International Cooperation Department at the National Center for Climate Change at um, an international cooperation. Uh, we have, yes, you are here. Uh, and then finally, Dr. Chao uh, Xingxu, uh, who is a professor of uh, and at the Division of Strategic Studies at the Institute for American Studies um, at the Chinese Academy of Social uh, Sciences. So first I will give uh, each of you about uh, five minutes to briefly, briefly present yourself and your work and how that, uh, or and as well as some reflections on, uh, on today's topic. And then we will open up for um, for a um, joint uh, discussion and to take also questions from, uh, from the audience. Um, do any of you have, um, um, a, will you be sharing your screen? I will let uh, Dr. Uh, Yu go first. Okay, thanks so much. I will share my screen and uh, uh, sorry, I have around the uh, 30 pages upon uh, point, but I will uh, use the uh, only use maybe uh, ten, uh, uh, five to eight minutes to uh, yes, for, for my uh, I'm that just, sounds good. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, that's a uh, for for this this topic is also the uh, uh, very important topics. 
but the, it's the first is about the uh, about the climate sorry about the climate security. If we take about uh, take a look about the current the current United Nations climate security report, we can find that the most uh, of China's neighboring countries are actually are most are also the most vulnerable vulnerable to the climate change. And also, if we take a look about the currently the water, energy, agriculture, food crisis, particularly China currently is current is in the uh, crisis of coal-fired power plants and coal supply. And, uh, and in, in the meantime, we found that the most of European countries uh, actually are also in the electricity and the gas security crisis in the meantime. And also we 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 we, we, we also to find the, uh, the climate change actually just like nexus for the food, water and, and energy, uh, particularly for this year. And also not only but also for we, we should also to take it as a uh, as a, from the population from the uh, agriculture from the also for the water water scarcity from all the all over the world and uh, also we we can find that according to the latest United Nations Global Water Report particularly for for China and Southeast Asian countries and even the African countries we can find for this are all the most dangerous regions for global water stress, hot stop, uh, spot, spot. And also we can find that, uh, uh, that, that, that for, the, uh, for the most uh, climate change and uh, the, the water and the food crisis for, for, for the this year. And also we should use the global resilience government, global uh, uh, adaptive, uh, adaptive governance to approach to cope with these uh, nexus challenges. This, this uh, principle is also embedded in the uh, SDG goals. Uh, uh, like uh, we, we can find that the, the, this nexus and the coherence principles for water, energy, food, for water resources and energy nexus are all already embedded in the SDG goals. Uh, and also we can find that uh, um, for for the for this uh, uh, for I'm sorry I, uh, for for the challenge for China is the most dangerous actually for it's a uh, we have the, the particularly challenge from the water and the food for the Chinese water largest countries for uh, to import the water because China is the world largest countries for for the soybean and other agricultural products importer. Uh, just last last year, so we have more than 100 million tons of well, soybeans import, and also for uh, 50 uh, more than 50 percent of the coal import, and uh, uh, around 24 percent uh, of the crude oil, and uh, uh, even the most of the, the resources. And this is shows China is very highly uh, dependent, very short, very highly dependent for the global changes, for the global water food resources uh, nexus challenge. Uh, uh, and also China also contribute to some uh, positive and the negative uh, exter externalities, <laughs> like, like just like uh, for because of China's huge amounts of the, the agriculture and the energy and the, even the water imports from our other world. So for, for China, on the other hand, we should to actually to cut and uh, to, 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 for, uh, to, to, to make a great energy and uh, economic transition for green low carbon. So we can actually to cut and reduce China's uh, global neg negative externalities to the world, but on the other hand, China should, should we also contribute to global sustainable development by our development model and by our uh, uh, by, by our de development and uh, also the, the way, uh, for for China's challenges. Uh, so it have the uh, this is a, a coin with two with double size. For uh, on the one hand, we can find that China takes around 
uh, around the 20, uh, 20, 25 percent of global energy to contribute only 20 uh, around the 17 uh, less than 17 percent of global GDP but also for for the at the same time for Germany only takes around three percent of GDP uh, three percent of the energy but contribute to uh, five percent more than five percent of global GDP. So and also China's carbon identity, carbon uh, energy efficiency is far lag, lag behind with the EU. And so if China we continue our uh, uh, develop high growing development, we should we ch should change our uh, uh, so, so our energy resource and water consumption model. Just like uh, President Xi said, China needs the energy revolution. Uh, energy revolution for this, and also we we can find not only uh, for for China's food, energy, water uh, changes, and uh, uh, according to the uh, update the Chinese national report, we can find that the, for uh, particularly for agriculture, for food and the nutrition security, and also for the uh, for the energy and uh, some very large work hydrogen hy hydro. Uh, infrastructure, we have quite a lot, uh, the, the, the but, but, but also with climate change, it's also the gene complex challenge to China uh, because we also have should uh, China lack the uh, private or uh, maybe the social forces to to help to in, to help or join the, the, the green development and uh, also we we can we can find uh, find that uh, that uh, so China take uh, the ecological security resource security ec economic security and any security in China's uh, so called comprehensive national security uh, uh, need principles uh, and this for from this way China try to use a systematic uh, security approach to uh, to cope with uh, so water and food challenges for China's uh, the, uh, China and climate change and also uh, also we can find that uh, uh, for for China and also have because his per capita water and food is far less than the global average, uh, like Shanghai. For Shanghai needs uh, uh, per capita water consumption is, uh, is around the 40s, for one forties of the world average. And also we can, we, we, we can uh, actually for 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 China uh, the uh, the SDG and uh, with with our neighboring countries. Uh, particularly uh, for for China, so one by one, so called one by one rule the countries, uh, of South Asia, Central Asia, and the Southeast Asia, and the China and Africa countries are all uh, are all vulnerable to such kind of water energy food relation. Uh, the, uh, the like uh, uh, particularly like uh, uh, Southeast Asia and South Asia uh, plum up river. Uh, uh, particularly uh, in South Asia. Uh, and uh, uh, Central Asian countries, the, we, we can find that, uh, like uh, in Amu River uh, regions, Amu River Basin, for China's investment or China's energy investment for conflict with, uh, with uh, the local uh, urbanization, industrialization, and the ecological, uh, ecological uh, the, 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 uh, situation, particularly like uh, in Pakistan, uh, we, we find the urban uh, the, the China's overseas investment. Uh, I, I currently have we found more and more uh, the, the local or the ecological uh, maybe barrier the obstacles. So how we should, and also we we find that the, the uh, from the uh, like China, India, uh, uh, Bangladesh, the Black and Rivers cooperation still, we the cooperation cooperation still, we have quite a lot of problem um, obstacles for this, and uh, also for uh, not only for the domestic but also for the uh, for the for the internationally inter internationally. Uh, we, we can find the energy, maybe currently for developing countries, energy is a very important, very important key for, for China to overcome this, uh, uh, this uh, challenges and uh, particularly uh, for, for the 
for me, my currently China and uh, other countries uh, are all try our best. Uh, not the, uh, and also our neighboring countries try to increase the uh, the system of clean energy, green energy in our uh, 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 consumptions, uh, consumptions, and also particularly uh, the, uh, the 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 same hydro and uh, also the, the China because uh, China as the world largest. Uh, 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 high, uh, the solar uh, and the wind power uh, capacity uh, producer, we actually have the capacity to try to uh, transfer our uh, production capacity to the developing countries on this clean energy and renewable energies. Uh, but by doing so, we try to, uh, the, the, uh, to keep and make a balance uh, between the world energy and the food. For the futures, uh, on the one hand, we should have found that uh, for China uh, and its neighboring countries, particularly for China's neighboring countries like South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Central Asia, and Africa, uh, even the African countries, we, on the other hand, among, on the other hand they have this country are most vulnerable to climate change, have quite a lot of troubles for water and food prices. But on the other, other hand, these countries are high, have highly growing demands for urbanization, industrialization, and it's a, uh, like a coal for plants building or, or even some energy buildings, the modernization demands. So what would say this is also what uh, for, for, for us, we should uh, to, to try to use this uh, water energy food that uh, uh, uses, uh, should have new thinking uh, to, to for this. For, for this. Uh, this uh, uh, for so this uh, this is reason so China try to use the so called ecological civilization uh, to use the systematic approach to help uh, and to join the China, the China and the neighboring countries uh, water and food governance and also uh, uh, and also with China uh, not only the, the that but also China for uh, to, to try. Uh, uh, also to best, uh, I'm sorry, the, the last bit, uh, to, to try to use the green partnership or green leadership, because for uh, for all China's neighboring countries, let's like start it, uh, 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 should also for the for them, it's not only low carbon development, but also the modernization plus the green and low carbon development. So for developing countries, particularly what China can do, it should take the ecologic, eco, Logical, logical civilization as coal, and we can to we should also to to help uh, to find the balance uh, between the modernization, urbanization, and the uh, the our collaboration for global global climate change. So this uh, uh, for from this way, so we we should use the business science, business NGOs and the government power together like a triangle. Uh, just to cope with the WEF the challenges, uh, particularly as we know for uh, SDG performance, China uh, from the 20, uh, 2015, we ranked uh, around the 17, uh, 79, but, uh, but uh, however, in the year 2019, China's SDG performance ranked around, uh, around the 39. Uh, 39. Uh, this, this show, this, this China's uh, Best practice shows we can find the uh, uh, find the uh, uh, find the path, find the route for for ecological civilization uh, to, to balance the modernization and the green low carbon building. Uh, this is all uh, for 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 my presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Yu. That was a very comprehensive overview um, of the issues, and it's clear that. That, uh, that the issues are overlapping and that the solutions um, should also uh, be. I think, um, could we move then to uh, Dr. Uh, Krampe from CIPRI? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and, and thank you, Professor Hu, for that, that impressive overview. I think you, you very, very clearly laid out the, the breadth of the 
water energy food nexus and and its implications and i think there's there's really interesting and and a lot of uh, interesting thoughts in there to pick up in the discussion um i'm i'm florian Krumper. i'm director of the climate change and risk program at cipri um where we where we both look at the um, understanding the, the dynamics evolution of 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 environmental or climate security issues but also how different institutional actors and institutions are discussing the issue and are responding to issues uh, related to that that interlinkage um, and I want to start with one brief reflection. Um, I, I'm first of all really happy that we have Professor Juan here, who is a senior associate fellow with CIPRI and is working uh, in, a, in a different cluster um, at CIPRI and in, in, uh, leading, leading the, the work in the uh, in Asia, Asia uh, program. But I think there's a really interesting reflection in, in the work we have at CIPRI now on climate change and security, which is that, that you probably don't know uh, CIPRI for its work on climate change. You know it for disarmament, non-proliferation. You know it for very different, very hard security issues. Um, the Climate Change and Risk Program is the biggest program at CIPRI at this point. And I think it shows us one thing, the security landscape has changed. And I think Professor Hu showed that eloquently also how, how these different interconnections and the breadth of the interactions are actually um, have changed and are changing continuously the security landscapes that we're operating in. And I think that brings really interesting questions with um, so I'm really happy to, to have all of you here, but also I'm really curious to, to hear later the, the reflections that, that others have on, um, on, on this space. And um, to, to delve a little bit deeper into the work we're doing, um, we, uh, from, from the research we do, and, and Professor Hu touched upon that also very, very clearly, we see that the double burden of climate change and conflict is increasing the hardship of already highly vulnerable populations, right? This, this strong overlap of where climate impacts lay and where, where um, fragile um, societies are. Um, not that those are caused in any way, but I think the correlation in itself is really remarkable um, pointing to, to the complexity. Um, but I think what also research increasingly shows and um, where, where there is a consensus emerging is that, that climate change, in fact, increases the risk of conflict. It increases the risk of violence, but we very clearly know also that climate change is not the only cause of that. There's a complex interweb of, of causes and root causes and dynamics that are, are um, uh, leading to conflicts and, and influencing the dynamics of conflicts. Um, different social, political, economic, and uh, ecological contexts matter and change how these, these factors play out and, and uh, what the dynamics are. But I think one thing is pretty clear. We cannot ignore climate and, and its impacts that it has on, on the security space that we are, we are operating in today. Um, in the work that we are doing together with NUPI um, and, and uh, supporting the Norwegian government in, in its work in the Security Council, we're responding to a need, I think, of this new security space, which is more knowledge, um, timely, relevant, academic evidence on how these dynamics on climate change and security are playing out to inform policy making at the highest and, and different decision making bodies. Um, I think that, that this knowledge is needed. It's again a reflection that the security space has changed. There's a demand for it. There's increased discussion of, of it. Um, so what we're doing is providing fact sheets on different geographies um, to outline the challenges and, and provide an, a, a picture on the knowledge that we have at the moment, outlining the impacts that we know and, and from, from the academic literature on how climate change is playing out in these dynamics explaining how climate change, why, why climate change actually matters for these societies, for these geographies that we're dealing with, right? What, how does it link to the vulnerabilities that we see? And then to use um, four interrelated pathways um, to explain how these vulnerabilities are translating into, into insecurities, into different, different forms of violence on, uh, across the whole spectrum from protests and, and small scale community violence 
two um, larger civil wars and 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 and, and different tensions. Um, So I think what, what this research and this work is, is showing us, and, and again, I think that came, came through in, 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 in parts of, of the previous presentation, is how the human security risks of today are increasingly interlinked and becoming hard security risks of tomorrow. But it raises really interesting questions, and I wanted to pose those questions to us. What are the solutions? And I think um, Professor Hu outlined a really interesting approach with the ecological civilization um, part. I think that would be really interesting to to delve in deeper and 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 think about. Um, but maybe on a more fundamental level, like how can we, as as actors um, from different geographies, cooperate um, in this space um, as as researchers, academics? How can we cooperate and, and increase the knowledge and awareness of this nexus? How can we improve our analysis and make, the, make it context specific, navigate the complexity um, that, that was, was built? What is the capacity building we need beyond us? As, um, actually within us as researchers, right? Within uh, the, the peace and security space, uh, of research, but actually also beyond um, in, with uh, practitioners, decision makers, what is the, the capacity we need to build uh, and, and deal? And, and also where should the responses lie? What are the right institutional spaces um, to, to have these, that, that these uh, responses need to be anchored in? Is it the Security Council? What can the Security Council do? Is it the regional organizations? What can national states do? Um, I think it's really interesting to explore this question also, like where, where's the, where does climate security sit? Where's the home for it? I'll close there, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we will return to these uh, very uh, interesting questions uh, in the discussion afterwards. Um, I will now uh, give the word to Dr. Koldrang uh, Kilde. Thank you very much. And thank you also for organizing and inviting me to participate on this very interesting topic. And uh, I have appreciated all the input so far. It's very stimulating to uh, hear such different perspectives on this um, timely matter. Um, my my work is uh, mostly focusing on uh, the Sahel region. Uh, I think uh, the Sahel uh, in West Africa is uh, often used by policymaker as this uh, perfect catastrophe that contains all of the 21st century's um, uh, security challenges, including uh, climate change and terrorism, organized crime and migration. Um, but um, my focus actually develops a bit uh, from the from the very local perspectives and trying to understand also how, uh, for instance, uh, conflicts over uh, natural resources and issues of natural resource governance can also escalate and now have these new stakes with um, actors such as uh, Islamic State and Al Qaeda uh, also taking advantages of local people's grievances. Um, and, and also, Another aspect of my research uh, touches upon um, what you could say is sort of the um, uh, intended, but also the unintended consequences of both development and security initiatives. And I thought it was very interesting how Dan Smith also um, raised this issue of implementation, because of course there's always a sort of translation of policy agendas into uh, national, but also local um, uh, uh, priorities. So for me, maybe uh, just to contribute to, to this debate, I think it's very important that this agenda doesn't become just a top-down political priority. I also know that in, in Denmark, there is a great push for having climate change and climate uh, uh, security as part of the development and financing. But, but I think it's very important about this translation process to the implementation level and how is this taken up by, by local actors and um, also matching their priorities, particularly in the most 
um, some say fragile uh, environments, uh, particularly in regions like the Sahel. And also to say that um, desertification narratives uh, has also led to, to um, uh, the wrong policies and uh, that has also stirred conflicts, which is also points to what Lauren Krampe says, that there is a lot of social, political and socioeconomic drivers and conflicts. And uh, to me also, uh, adding that aspect and also of how to find local peace solutions is extremely important. Then we can also talk about how more adaptive uh, local livelihood strategies can play into that. Uh, but we shouldn't forget that uh, perhaps peace and stability is also something that we haven't solved yet. Um, so it's very interesting to see how uh, perhaps climate security agenda can provide an uh, opening uh, opportunity for addressing some of these long-standing conflicts over uh, what would I, I would frame as uh, natural resource governance issues. So I think I'll stop here and um, just really uh, looking forward to hearing perspectives and taking the encouragement to, to also um, opening up the silo <laughs> for research. Thank you very much. And I should maybe also mention that um, Beeks has also been uh, joining uh, as a membership of the Nordic Baltic um, uh, Network for Climate Change Security, and we're very um, pleased for that. Thank you very much. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Uh, may I ask you if we can ask the ask the Professor Chai Qiming to speak first, because he have he have to leave leave around four o'clock. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, thanks, yes. thanks so much. So then we, uh, yeah, thank you uh, for a very interesting, for reminding us that we need to remember also the local perspective here. Um, then we move to, to Dr. Chai. Immediately. Yes, uh, uh, thanks Chai, uh, thanks Chai. And uh, it's uh, very sorry, I have to leave earlier. So I uh, asking for her uh, make the speech first. Uh, actually, uh, my name is Chai Shimi and I'm from uh, NCC and the director for strategy and the planning. And we are doing uh, most of the work here in China related to climate change. And uh, typically for like a carbon peak and a carbon neutrality uh, vision here development uh, in China. And uh, in, the, in the last few years, actually we focus lots of uh, efforts um, dealing with uh, 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 energy industries and uh, other sectors and with the climate change issues, how to implement uh, the ambition target here and how to uh, dealing with uh, the uh, climate se security as the central of the, uh, 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 our eco-civilization uh, policy agenda and also uh, in, in the 2019, together with the New Zealand, actually we, we initiated uh, the pro process of uh, uh, natural based solution, uh, typically for uh, uh, eco uh, environmental protection uh, and uh, adaptation of, uh, of uh, climate change and also the, 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 the forest carbon sink and uh, the water resources. Uh, the ocean systems and also food, uh, sustainable food development here uh, together with the climate change issues. So this is a very interesting uh, topic actually for us to join uh, uh, for the, 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 the energy, uh, water, food nexus uh, together with the, uh, the, the uh, climate change uh, security issues. I, I want to share two cases here happened uh, this year in China. And one is in, in summer, actually one of our provinces, uh, Henan, which is also uh, uh, agriculture dominated provinces in China. And uh, one fifth of the food is, uh, is uh, supplied by these provinces here all over the regions. Uh, but this, uh, this summer there's a uh, 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 flood, uh, it, it extremely uh, climate change uh, events happened here. So it's destroyed all the, because it's uh, almost into the harvest season. 
and it destroyed older uh, uh, food uh, uh, agricultures. Uh, the, 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 the present, they lost their uh, income actually from, from such kind of uh, agriculture developments. And also the, the extreme uh, climate uh, events also destroyed uh, the power system for weeks and the local people lost uh, connection with the outside of the world. Uh, no, no, no mo uh, mobile phone signals and no uh, electricity supplies. So this is a tip very typical uh, cases here happened in China. The sec uh, climate security uh, have uh, large differences on the local people's life and also food supply. So this year, China also have problems uh, some, some kind of a problems with, uh, with the food system as well. Another case is, uh, uh, another case is uh, uh, about uh, 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 in the sub September, in the sub September, uh, you, as we know, uh, China have uh, 71 provinces uh, within the country, uh, but uh, more than uh, 60, 60 provinces, they have uh, facing the challenge uh, from the, the power shortage. Uh, the, the, a lot of industries was shut down because there's no power supply. And uh, also even the, the, the household uh, uh, power supply is uh, facing such kind of challenges uh, because the, uh, they say some parts of the, the, the reasons is from, because China now released our ambition, uh, uh, climate change uh, uh, targets, actually for like uh, uh, 2030 and 2060. Such kind of uh, climate change actions also have impacts on, for example, the, the fossil fuel supply, uh, the, the coal power plants. And such kind of uh, power plants, they are uh, 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 regulated by the, the central governments, but the local, uh, the local government, they also need, because this year, uh, they are more uh, demand from the global uh, market and also from uh, 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 stimulate, st stimulates for economic growth here in China. So such kind of problems also happened in China because uh, before actually everyone is welcoming like uh, uh, carb, uh, climate and uh, carbon uh, emission control policies. But uh, during uh, several few months ago, such kind of events happened. They also say, we can see different uh, voices actually already rising from uh, different uh, stakeholders. They said we should balance uh, the development and also the emission reduction. Uh, we should balance the short-term action and uh, with the long-term uh, uh, sustainable development goals. So this is also some kind of uh, barriers here. We're facing uh, challenges in, in, in China. Uh, now we are doing the next five years plan for climate change. Uh, we also should uh, 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 wisely uh, dealing with such kind of uh, dilemmas uh, for the energy security, economy security, uh, together with climate uh, security. I hope uh, we, can, uh, we can hear more uh, suggestions and also welcoming comments on uh, China recent development. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chai. That's very, um, very interesting and um, um, stimulating for, for our further discussion. Uh, I think we will move to the final uh, panelist before we open up the floor. Um, Dr. Chow, I think uh, you are here, right? Yes. I think you are still muted. I'm sorry, you are muted, so we cannot hear you. Ah, oh, there we are. Excellent. Okay, okay. Uh, you're muted again. <laughs> Sorry. 
I think you are muted still. Is that okay? Yes, no. no. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so many security uh, issues. Mm. So very honored to join in this panel. I'm Xing Shu from the Institute of American Studies, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. My area is energy and uh, climate uh, policies governance, especially uh, focusing on United States. Uh, just now the speeches discussions are very impressive. Climate change high, uh, has uh, security implications, especially on food, energy, uh, water issues. Today, I'd like to share three points very briefly. Mm, just now, Dr. Kramp uh, suggests uh, uh, we should pay more attention to the solution, what, uh, what kind of solution uh, will be needed. Maybe my, uh, my thinking uh, will give some, how should I say, uh, I, I will talk, uh, talk a little about it. Uh, the first point is uh, food, energy, water nexus has security implications. But, but uh, the solution does not uh, depend only on the security tools. That means the development approach, such as economic tools, social tools, and technology will work very well. When they emphasize the security implications of food, energy, water nexus, we actually suggest the food, energy, water nexus issue should be treated seriously as much as the other security issues. It should be given enough attention. This is my first point. The second point I want to talk about is one of problems in existing research on this topic. A bunch of research papers focus on technical dimension that is with different uh, indicators and methods to assess the risk of a region, a country, or a sector. For example, the food, energy, water nexus of China's Inner Mongolia, focusing on the interaction of the three elements. That means the inner relationship between the three elements so far, Few studies talk about the external changes, such as political and economic environment. In fact, the geopolitics and great power competition are shaping the future international system and global governance. To address the food, water, energy nexus, which will be influenced actually by geopolitics and great power competition. Unfortunately, there is few studies on this topic now. And then what kind of impact will geopolitics and great power competition have on the food, energy, water, nexus issue? This is my third point. The changing geopolitics and great power competition will bring two negative consequences, I think. The first is with the, great, with the rise of great power competition, the technology has become the important dimension of economic strength, as well as the important dimension of national security. Thus, technology policy has become one of strategic tools. That means technology cooperation is no longer the pure issue not only about technology. In fact, it is inevitably involved in the political and uh, security concerns. So barriers in technology cooperation, on monitoring, early warning, data analysis, and so on, will probably be unexpected. The second negative consequence is, like the technology, the international cooperation itself may also encounter challenges. 
the strategic uh, competition between China and the US is intensified. We all know that these two countries both try to enhance their influence in the world or in specific region. Their policies on developing countries are closely tracked and responded by each other. Some policies and measures might be misunderstood or even distorted due to the lack of mutual trust. Simply put, my third point is that due to geopolitics and great power competition, both technology cooperation and general international cooperation are not a pure technical issue, but instead an international political and economic issue. There may be some unexpected obstacles when addressing food, energy, water nexus. So just the three points, that's what I want to share today. Let me summarize. First, food, energy, water nexus has security implications. Its solution still depends more on the development tools, but it needs to be treated seriously as much as security issues. Second, so far, the research on food, energy, water nexus issue ignores changes of the external environment. Third, the technology solution and international cooperation might encounter unexpected challenges due to geopolitics and great power competition. My final suggestion is further studies on those challenges and obstacles originated from geopolitics and great power competition need to be explored further. Thanks for listening. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much uh, for, a, for an excellent uh, um, ending to this, um, to this panel um, presentations. Um, I think uh, what we will do is open the floor. So um, if you could raise your hand, if you have a question, so then I will uh, give you the word. But I first wanted to, to ask um, perhaps a difficult question to all uh, of our panelists. Uh, it touches a bit on uh, on some of uh, Florian's questions as well. Um, and I'm wondering if you uh, could uh, reflect a little bit on how we can go from cooperation or from um, competition to cooperation um, relating to, um, to your work. Uh, I mean, I know this is a very uh, difficult question, but uh, I think it would be very interesting to hear uh, from all of you um, what you think about that. And um, since Dr. Chai uh, is leaving, I will give the word to him first if he has not already uh, left. Um, seems that he had maybe to move on, but okay. Then I will we'll go to Dr. Yu first. Uh, see if you have any thoughts on how we can go to uh, move to cooperation. Okay, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, from the competition to cooperation, we should also to take uh, pay, uh, to change our attention from outside or uh, from inside out to outside in, particularly for these five powers uh, to ask what the external uh, externality you will uh, to, to contribute to the world. It's the negative or the positive. Um, and uh, and uh, you, you, I, I think this, uh, this for China, I think on the, some, some, some aspect, we, we actually have some negative externalities uh, like pollution, carbon pollution. But also we have quite a lot of positive like uh, the green finance. But for US or UP model, we, we have quite a lot of, positive externalities, particularly your the development model. And so for big powers, the number one is not to to uh, it's not to 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 create a so-called some international cooperation, but also to to try to create more and more positive external externalities, particularly for water and food. Uh, the uh, number the number uh, the number number two is uh, actually it's a uh, the, that's a 
what what China can do is try our best for 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 change. Maybe like she said, energy revolution, resource and revolution, and protect. Um, uh, uh, but for for us. The cooperation and our uh, cooperation cooperation is not just for the resources resources, but also we should cooperation for the resources, technology resources, uh, the the efficiency. Particularly, I, I think on the country to Roma club uh, theory that uh, actually after since uh, the last century uh, since since the nineteen seventies, actually our energy efficiency, our our energy technology food technology actually. Grows rapidly. I could so this uh, what we should do is to try our best to make the investment. We talk so much about the control, control our consumption, but we should pay more attention to our investment. Like China, US, European countries should to make more investment in green low carbon development. To maybe just like China, we should. Uh, should double with uh, our energy intensity, but uh, particularly the, like GDP, uh, uh, per capita GDP, GDP and energy consumption, and uh, and also this uh, the what what particularly for for make uh, the high technology or green low carbon technology technology can be accessed to the poor countries. Uh, so this is what what we we always talk about the competition for resources, but uh, we should change this competition to the cooperation for the investment because investment we can have the the positive win positive win win. Not currently it's the zero sum. We should change the zero sum or negative time sum co cooperation to the. Positive some some this will uh, will really on the our investment for technology and the uh, green uh, energy. Thanks so much. So, oops, I was muted there. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe we can hear from um, from Singna. Sing that. Could you do you want to come in? Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Dr. Chow. Okay. Uh, to be frank, your question is very difficult. Uh, but uh, uh, I still uh, try to tell something. If we go back to the history uh, since 1990s till 26, uh, the globalization is overwhelming. In this stage, the technology cooperation, uh, almost uh, each country prefer technology cooperation, not all, not all, uh, because Technology cooperation have a huge spill effect. Uh, the consequence, the positive consequence, not only in uh, technology area, but uh, also diplomatic, uh, economic, uh, the other areas. That's uh, that's a uh, trend. We must uh, uh, acknowledge that. But uh, after twenty sixteen, we say after the Trump administration coming into power, things changed. The competi competition factor, uh, competition factor attract uh, people's focus, attention, and almost uh, everything involves in competition uh, elements. So, and this trend I think uh, will continue for, uh, for uh, oh sorry for longer term, um, but uh, we we still have a uh, uh, new how should I say we we still we still can figure out a new method. Uh, in 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 the past, uh, when the technology cooperation happens between the national government, 
the government uh, dimension. But now, if the competition, in if if the competition, uh, take uh, the dominant, uh, how should I say, take the dominant side, uh, I think uh, the solution should be should be uh, should start uh, from bottom up. That means maybe the technology cooperation between national government or the local government, the government uh, dimension, uh, impossible. Maybe I say impossible, but uh, from the very uh, small scale, like, uh, like uh, uh, a city, uh, like uh, uh, some NGO organization, at this level, I think the international cooperation will help and also uh, possible. Uh, here, I can tell a case just now, Dr. Chai, uh, Chai Qimin tells the case of China's Henan province. The disaster happens in Henan, not only the, uh, this year, not only the drought, but also the floods. Uh, there, there, there was a strong, strong rain in Henan province, and actually the uh, local government uh, uh, gave the warning, uh, war war warning, warning. May I say that the warning to the public, but uh, but uh, the public, uh, the people, ordinary people. Uh, how should I say? At that place, uh, there there has been never such huge rain. People do not have such experience. Even they got uh, the the warning calls. They do not understand uh, uh, totally what it means to them. They still go out. They do not change their arrangements. So their uh, the the. The, how should I say, the, the loss is huge. Here, my point is um, even the technology solution is very important. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, the awareness of people, local people is still very important. Maybe that is a, is a start we can do work uh, from bottom up. That's uh, the start from the competition to cooperation. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very, very interesting reflections. Um, uh, Florian, do you want to? Um... Yeah, I mean, I think the other two very eloquently put it, and, and I think there's a, there's a lot to it. I, I, I think especially the The, the last points made on 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 the bottom up and and I think what it boils down to is is and and, and sorry for us maybe sliding into the cliche but it, it's what we're doing here right it's it's talking to each other it's dialogue between different different actors and and um, that are from coming from very different regions and 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 backgrounds and 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 traditions and speaking about the issue because what we see very clearly I think here is we're sitting in this together. It's a global challenge, right? It's it's we 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 have a lot of shared um, um, issues, shared vulnerabilities, uh, and and shared concerns. And I think if I if I'm reflecting on the on the space, and I think that came through in the previous um, uh, statement as well. So maybe sometimes we don't listen to each other the way we should, right? Um, to to really listen, take take the uncertainty that this global change with climate change brings to individuals, to, to um, in institutions, to, to nation states, to, to the global level. There's so much uncertainty in this to take that serious, right? Because all these actors are trying to navigate this space and are, are making trade-offs because it's it's not, I think that became so clear here today. It's, it's not one single issue. It's not like a, a, a small thing. It is connected to so many things. 
right the, to bigger economic transitions and questions and uh, of the of the whole whole um, global order so if we if we actively really exchange have a dialogue and listen to each other's concerns and take these uncertainties seriously i think we are we are making a really important step um, and i think that, a, a really important part of that, and I really like that in, in Professor Zhao's uh, previous intervention is to, to let's talk about politics. This is not a technical issue, just right. All this uncertainty is is somewhere within the political space, and and if we don't talk about it, we don't understand. Thank you. Uh, uh, that was a very nice uh, summary of, um, of our discussion so far. So I don't have any names uh, on the list, but if uh, any of our uh, participants or the panelists would like to ask a question. Oh, here we have a hand. Um, go ahead, um, uh, Dr. Yuan. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you, but I, you don't look muted either. Um, maybe it's something with the headphones, maybe they are not connected or... No, no, not really, right. We still can't hear you. If you if you want, you could uh, maybe you can type your question in the chat. Um, no, we can't hear you. Maybe if you try to uh, leave the meeting and come back in, that can work. Okay, so let anyone else have any uh, questions for, for Yes. Yep, Doctor, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, because we our institutes work with the uh, uh, the in, in the IIT for the plum up rewards dialogue for uh, for three years after this after this year's cooperation with India Bangladesh Nepal the, and put put on these countries we found the south to south cooperation south to uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, it's very uh, very important uh, very important for what uh, what ended food uh, food uh, added food, food problem your know, nexus because particularly for India uh, currently uh, India will double, will have this uh, population and GDP growth rate and energy consumption uh, consumption of coal fire power plants will double in next 20 or 30 years so this uh, what we can do like uh, uh, particularly China EU or US we should also to pay more attention to current Southeast Asian countries and the South Asian countries with the very rapidly population growth. So we should, when we take a look about the WEF uh, Nexus issues, we should uh, take concern about the population growth. Like uh, uh, currently, like Afghanistan have the, 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 the 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 most the the for the forty million populations, but without the enough food, and uh, also for for Central Asia and the Middle East countries uh, like in, and we should particularly after pandemic, all the world the energy food nexus challenges become more and more serious, but because of the global uh, global supply chains. Uh, shut the, uh, the, the same crisis. We, we can find the same energy crisis in European countries and in in China. So, so, so we should also for WEF Nexus. We should uh, to uh, currently we should take the uh, pandemic, pandemic and the global supply chain the challenges a shock. The, 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 the big challenges uh, for, for the very high priority. The second, uh, uh, because I, 
actually we should delink the geopolitical thinking from the, the climate security our cooperation or the green development cooperation and but we should also link or try to, to strengthen the linkage between the uh, green development between the nexus what energy food nexus and the big data and the energy Digitalization revolution together uh, because we can find that uh, in, uh, in in China, in, in Australia, in Canada, because of the big data AI's uh, uh, the revolution for, for the water uh, and the energy management, the particular water and food, the big data uh, government management, we can start, we actually we can uh, make our efficiency for so resources efficiency uh, grows very the the the, 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 the grows very rapidly. So this is the reason we should uh, on the one hand we should delink the geopolitics uh, between the WEF and the geopolitics. On the other hand, on the other hand, hand we should we suggest the link with the big data AI and the world uh, uh, WEF because because water energy food. Actually, we need particularly for the developing countries need the data governance, need need the transparency, data governance, particularly for, for uh, this is also based on our experience for Brahma rewards governance. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, let's um, hear, see if uh, Dr. Yuan, if you, if we can hear you now. No, unfortunately, it seems to still be uh, a problem. Um, but if you if you want to, you can write me um, uh, your comment, and then I can and then I can share it with the rest. Uh, but in the meantime, um, Cedric, you raised your hand. Thank you very much, everyone. It was really interesting uh, contributions through the panel. And for me, one of the interesting things that I, I felt uh, came out of the discussion is to show how the food, water, energy nexus are interlinked and linked to very many other issues. So horizontally across these various dimensions in which our lives are, are organized and different disciplines, but also vertically from, from the local to uh, and you gave many examples of specific experiences and impacts, for instance, in China, but also to the global and to the level of international geopolitical competition and or cooperation. And I was wondering, on the one hand, if you find uh, how we are developing knowledge differently or how we are engaging in trying to understand the problem differently because of this very complex nature, multi-dimensionality of, of the challenges. So if you see any changes in the way we are trying to analyze and understand the problem. And on the other hand, if you see any changes in the way we are trying to manage these issues, do we see more of a cooperation across different government departments or different agencies? Uh, do we see some form of uh, adaptive governance is different from a very kind of a pre-planned way of managing governance before. It'll be very interesting just to hear your, your reflection if you see any changes in how we both understand or try to manage these problems. Thank you. Thank you, Cedric. I will uh, give the word to Dr. Shao first, if she, if she, if she has anything. Maybe she's not uh, here right now. Uh, Dr. Yu, do you, um, would you like to respond to, to Cedric? Oh, uh, 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 thanks, so, uh, thank, uh, thanks so much. And uh, particularly for this uh, WEF uh, Nexus and for, for Cedric's uh, questions. Uh, uh, and actually, for, 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 from the international level and for, from the global level, regional level, and, uh, and also for, for China's domestic, uh, we, we found that we also, so currently we talk about the co co competition, co collaboration and the co co uh, competition together. This first, the second is about, uh, for China, we have the uh, idea about the energy plus or uh, 
uh, low carbon uh, development plus. This means uh, uh, that I talk about energy, energy, uh, food, water, governments plus 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 like pan, uh, gl global supply chain. The, the third is about currently we have the uh, we will have because of the uh, the, the the new and clean energy uh, development we will fall into the uh, new resources com conflicts or competition uh, on least some real earth and some other uh, uh, critical manners like uh, China, EU, and the US. So, uh, but this uh, is uh, quite different uh, like, uh, for, uh, like uh, all your gas because we have a uh, finance market for all your gas, but we have totally no finance market uh, for for least um, for the combat for uh, for for this uh, for for this actually we, we think that the financialized all the market marketized uh, the, this uh, resources these resources we can minimize the, the complex potential complex but just like nineteen uh, seventies uh, uh, experience we have the IA we have the financial market we have U S oil dollar. Dollar. So this actually we have we can successful build a stable global uh, energy market and also we should uh, currently we should because we have the big just to talk about the big data revolution we have the global big data we should make the big big, uh, big data into the uh, WEF governance and uh, also uh, current uh, uh, because next year's United Nations will begin to. Uh, discuss the, the the SDG goals after 2030 for the new agenda, new sustainable development agenda, the setting agenda meeting. We should make the WEF as a top priority for the new agenda after 2030. Because for uh, when when I come to some developing countries, they really have. Actually, they have no. Uh, 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 actually, they have no such capacity for data, data uh, for data uh, uh, capacity for particularly for water, any food, uh, 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 information. So, uh, particularly, so I think the data is uh, uh, governance or corporations foundations, uh, particularly for 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 the, for, 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 for 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 us, China, EU, EU corporation for for this. Uh, WEF uh, develop, as a development uh, agenda, I, I think we should make it also into the OECD uh, DACA's uh, top priority and also make it into the uh, 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 SDG after 2030's agenda. By doing so, we can, because for WEF crisis, I think most of the happen in the developing countries, in the transboundary uh, developing countries uh, with like South Asia, Central Asia, Africa, regions. But they have really have no, uh, not such capacity to provide enough data on this. So this is what we should do. Should, should we should 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 put it in the actually very important agenda setting for uh, for like G20, G7, because currently G20. Uh, this year has the energy environmental uh, uh, minister uh, minister ministers uh, 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 conference, but but the minister level conference. Uh, well, I think we should uh, maybe for next year's G20 meetings, uh, we should ask G20 ministers for water, for energy, for for the environment. Uh, the minister should sit together to 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 this, uh, to make a G twenty roadmap for WEF uh, Nexus agenda. So, 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 so we should use the G twenty major economies roadmap to, to help the uh, global uh, the, the, to help the, the world to resolve the, the world and food uh, challenges. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we could have uh, continued this discussion uh, for a long time, um, but I think in the interest of time that we need to move um, to the closing remarks. So I will give the word back to Cedric, but first let me just uh, thank all our panelists for sharing their um, very interesting perspectives and reflections. I think it has uh, been uh, very illuminating and exciting to be part of this panel. Um, Cedric, over to you.
Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, just, just searching for my mute button there. I had another screen open for a moment. So uh, yes, that was really a very interesting conversation. And, and sorry, Signa, I saw you wanted to ask a question as well. I'm sorry we didn't get to, to you. But um, we were going to have closing remarks uh, from Dr. Ying Dong Yuan. Um, so let's, and I know that he's been having problems now, unfortunately, with his microphone. Um, I don't know if we should try one more time. I see now you are muted, but if you just want to try one more time, do you want to see if there, maybe there's a different option? No, unfortunately not. Um, then we wanted to, um, to try to get, um, no, unfortunately we don't hear you, Dr. Yuan. Must be something with the microphone settings. Sometimes when we switch from the headphones to the computer, it creates a disconnection. So then we have closing remarks by myself and by uh, Professor Yu Hong Yong Wan. Maybe I will start from my side. Um, so I just want to thank everybody. I thought it was a really interesting conversation that we had. I think it's clear from, from all of your inputs uh, that climate change is the most important global challenge of our time. Um, and I think we've heard in many different ways how our social and ecological systems are inseparably interlinked and how this has an impact on both the food, water, energy nexus we discussed in, in detail, but also then on the climate peace nexus. And of course, these connections and, and, and impacts are not necessarily direct. There could be, and there are many other compounding and systemic causal dynamics that play a role. And therefore, I think it's very useful to, to try and, and analyze and, and, and influence these systems with a complex adaptive systems approach. And I think that also means in terms of our governmental challenges and our ways in which we're trying to manage these risks, that an adaptive approach could be very useful. And um, I, I think this was a very good start for me uh, of our dialogue. It was very interesting to hear your reflections. It was very interesting to hear also from you how this is impacting aspects of uh, the life and, and, and developments in China that we don't necessarily hear about uh, very much uh, outside. So that was very interesting insights as well. And I look forward to us continuing this dialogue in, in many different ways. So thank you very much from my side. And let me go to, to Professor Yu for any closing remarks you may have. Can I give it a try again? Yes, we can actually hear you. Please uh, okay. go ahead. Now Perfect. it's working. Now I it's switched. working. <laughs> Sorry. My, uh, my apologies for all these uh, technical uh, glitches. And, uh, no problem. Please go I think, ahead. I, I, I think I very much enjoyed the, uh, the conversation and discussion uh, today. So uh, obviously, I think uh, if I can have a several uh, takeaways, one is I think there's a growing uh, awareness and recognition that climate change is real and uh, climate security uh, has significant implications for our, you know, our lives, regardless where we live, where, you know, where, where we belong. So this is the, uh, the first one. And second, obviously, uh, with regard to this uh, food security, water and energy uh, supply, these are, some of the key uh, elements in the, what we would call uh, non-traditional uh, security challenges. And we mentioned toward the end of the seminar about the politics of this, because if we understand the governments, they have very short span attention. So if they don't encounter crisis, uh, typically they won't uh, you know, devote, allocate resources to address the problem. Now, the climate change is a, a problem that is uh, slowly, you know, have a greater, uh, uh, you know, impact on the humanity, uh, on our ecosystem. So it's not a dramatic impact and immediately, uh, so that to get all the governments, uh, you know, up in arms and, and start to, to working uh, together. But I think uh, with COP26 and with all the, uh, if you look at the flood and droughts and uh, 
food shortage. And you know, we're just listening even this morning about Yemen, you know, food crisis. And the global organization, international organization, do not have the uh, enough resources to address all of these problems. So clearly, we need uh, uh, cooperation and 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 technical cooperation, but also most importantly, cooperation uh, among important you know players. And so this is not a one country's uh, mission, one international organization mission is. All of us, you know, uh, must you know uh, start to really take this uh, seriously. But how do we get there? Because the impacts of food security, water, and energy have different degrees of you know uh, uh, externalities or or you know cost problems uh, for each country. So I think that's the uh, uh, the challenges. You know, even your not being affected by all these problems. Uh, but over time, the climate change will eventually get to you. So you have to think ahead and pay ahead. Uh, and now, pay now to prevent a, a global uh, a crisis. So I think there's a combination of technical uh, cooperation. I think the food crisis, when I think about it, shortage is really not the shortage in the production manufacturing is more of a you know the problem you know transportation supply demand you know and and so all of these other complications uh, and so I think with COVID nineteen some of these problems being even more severe because of the uh, disruption of supply chains and and the dramatic increase in cost uh, in delivering you know energy delivering uh, delivering food and and so forth and. So how do we move from now uh, to, you know, to getting to concrete uh, uh, solutions, I think remain uh, a, a significant challenge and the politics are very much uh, in, in the middle and, and it's the center of, of this. Uh, so I think uh, I, I commend all the panelists and, and participants for a very interesting uh, discussion and I apologize, uh, apologize profusely for my you know, technical uh, glitches and uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Yuan. And, and uh, don't worry at all about the technical issues. We've all experienced them at some point, uh, had the same experience. Lin, uh, let me go to um, Professor Yu Hongwan for our final remarks. Right, over to you in Shanghai. Thanks so much. Thanks. Uh, 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 it's actually, this is a very wonderful uh, conference uh, organization. It's a very great uh, uh, topics for us and, uh, uh, from China. And from the, from you, you said, we share our uh, experience and wisdom on these topics. Uh, for me, particularly for my personal experience, we actually, I really believe the investment, investment for WEF challenge is much, much more than control, than control, global control. Because when I come to Copenhagen conference in 2009, at that time, China had very little capacity to produce solar and wind energy. At that time, so, solar and solar equipment price is 10 times than right now. But however, currently China's solar solar production is around eighty percent globally, and even the wind. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, this and when we talk about the food crisis, uh, we should to pay to to also to take a look about this country like Yemen, like Afghanistan. These countries have no capacity, uh, have very heavy deficit for for import and export, particularly like uh, East Arabia, have, have actually very little, very little ex export capacity than uh, like uh, even Afghanistan. I also have this kind of crisis. The crisis is not really on the, so uh, not only level on the climate change, but also I think the the fact the, the, the resolution de depends on this country's modernization, depends on if we to help these countries 
to develop his export export pro, uh, production capacity. This is very important for this uh, uh, countries who who like and uh, so this uh, what we can do is to strengthen the south to south cooperation just to strengthen the development aid not uh, to, for to help these countries have the resilience production capacities and uh, to help these countries increase the modernization industrialization because currently some western scholars uh, uh, think that uh, African countries, or is, particularly is Albania or Central Asian countries, should not uh, have the, to 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 stretch strive for their modernization urbanization. But I don't think it's uh, it's fair to the world. I think this may currently most of the crises are all are still be, uh, come from uh, all the, uh, the 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 I'm in the the. Uh, develop and development, not just because of the climate change or the global crisis. So we should also to 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 push forward our uh, modernization and our in international cooperation together. The last one is we should for for for, for also to build the uh, build the knowledge sharing and particularly knowledge sharing is based on the data data for the developing country. We should strengthen our field work. Particularly for this transboundary, trans transboundary regions, uh, basins, uh, and uh, uh, like like uh, like Central Asia, and uh, to to build a knowledge network on WEF, not just uh, because currently most of the literature only focus on the developed countries, cities, rich cities studies. We should have more and more studies on Central Asia, like in, in the East Obia, or in uh, for, for the, some data from the South Asia. And the, we, only by doing so, we can to try to, uh, we can help, we can build a maybe comprehensive knowledge network of, for our WEF, uh, WEF Nexus uh, uh, governance. Thanks so much. Thank you and look forward for our next, uh, next uh, workshop. Thanks so much. Thank you very much uh, to you, Prof. You, uh, and to all our participants. Um, I think you've outlined the agenda or the topic for our next workshop already, because I think that the challenge of uh, continuing uh, development and uh, aligning that with, at the same time, our goals around uh, net zero emissions by 2050 is a key challenge. How do we achieve both continued development of those those countries and regions of the world that uh, that deserve to be developed and that demand justly to be developed and at the same time uh, achieve our net zero emissions i think that is a very important uh, discussion that probably also will be an important discussion at at cop 26 and elsewhere so i think that could be an excellent uh, topic for a next seminar so thank you very much to, to, to all our participants, to our colleagues uh, in, in Shanghai and elsewhere in China, and also to our colleagues in the Nordic and Baltic network um, here in Northern Europe. Thank you for your attention and we look forward to continuing this dialogue. Goodbye for today. Thank you. Thank you.